Hey everyone, it's your favorite funny Minecrafter here, SpeedyCube64, and this is going to be a really rough tutorial on how to speedrun Spellbound Caves. Uh, I am going to start off by showing you a route that can sub-15, and then I'm going to show you a couple of strats that you can add in once you feel confident enough to go for a top time like sub-12. And uh, I wanted to get this tutorial out, like I wanted to put more time into this, but uh, I'm kind of lacking the motivation to do so, honestly. And in the past like week or so, I've had like two or three people come into the CTM speedrunning Discord and uh, express interest in getting into running CTM maps. And uh, I'd rather have this out so I can show them something rather than uh, having to wait too long to put out the tutorial. So I might put out a complex, like fleshed out, really polished tutorial at some point, but for now this should just hold those runners over. Um, all right, now I'm gonna talk about why Spellbound Caves is a really good map to run. Uh, number one, it's in 1.8, and a lot of uh, Minecraft players are already familiar with 1.8. And number two, it um, it is really easy to learn and it is really easy to get better at because the beginner route and the world record route are technically the same route. So for other maps like Waking Up, if you wanna learn the map as a beginner, uh, you have to do a completely different route than what the world record does. But for this map, the beginner route and the world record route, they're basically the same. You just don't do some of the tricks that the world record does. Um, all right, so First, I'm going to be talking about mod setup, and you don't have to get any mods, but it will be um, your life will be easier if you do get these mods. Uh, so I have a folder here called Spellbound folder. You're gonna uh, I'm gonna put it in the description, and you can go download it, and uh, it'll have basically everything you need to get started running, and to it'll basically have everything you need. Period for running this map, so it's pretty cool. Um, I didn't make any of this stuff. Uh, here are the people who made all this stuff. Uh, yeah, so uh, I recommend using multi-MC, but uh, this has the resources for multi-MC and for the vanilla launcher. So to start off, you want to make a new instance, and instead of like going create instance, what you want to do is you want to take this folder, uh, this zip, uh, Legacy Fabric 1.8.9 multi-MC, and drag it into here. This will make it create a new instance from this zip. Call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it tutorial, uh, and I'm gonna put it in the group that makes sense. So in this, you're gonna hit edit instance. You're going to go to loader mods, uh, and in this folder here, you can see mods for Spellbound. You're just gonna drag these things in. Um, you can also uncheck legacy fabric API. You don't need that. So uh, Optifine is just performance enhancement. Like it, uh, you, probably, you, know, you know what Optifine does, I don't need to explain it. Uh, OptiFabric allows Optifine to work with the legacy fabric model loader. Speedrun IGT puts an in-game timer on your screen, which is really useful. You don't have to go retime it with video editing. And this other mod too, Oompus, this one's optional, but basically it puts a little uh, thingy in the top left of your screen with coordinates. Um, so yeah, these are the mods you're gonna do. Um, and also, if you want to go change the amount of memory your game has, because uh, you're gonna be changing your render distance a little bit, so you won't need a ton of memory, but you might wanna, if, you're, if you have it on like a thousand here, you probably wanna up it a little bit just to avoid crashes. Uh, you can do that in the settings tab here. So yeah, now you can go launch your game and uh, I'm just gonna wait for that to finish. So uh, if you did it correctly, everything should load up. Uh, now you can go, you know, do whatever you want, change your FOV. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off because it's distracting. And uh, if you want to know all of the different, like if you're, if you want to go for max FPS and uh, you don't know what settings you want to do in these Optifine settings, you can mouse over these and it'll tell you which ones are faster. So just do that for all these settings. Um, and then in 
this one. You're gonna click this little blaze powder on the top left. That's your speedrun IGT timer mod options. So for what you wanna do, you wanna to go to timings, uh, timer start on first input, start on old worlds on, and then in, um, I think it is general, you're gonna to go to timer category and you're gonna hit custom. And then in um, controls, you're gonna scroll down and there's gonna be a button to stop timer and make that whatever you please. And then also make sure you, uh, you wanna be able to reach all of these hotkeys ideally. So I like to do, for example, this. Um, you can you can obviously do use whatever hotkeys. If you've played like PvP or whatever, you probably have your own. Um, that's all the settings you're gonna need to do in game. There's one pretty important setting you would wanna do, but you have to quit the game to do it. And that is um, going into your uh, Minecraft folder here. You wanna actually go into the folder so you can uh, you can either do the whole like uh, Windows R app data percent type thing, or you can go to just tutorial, or like you can go to your instance and hit Minecraft folder, and it'll bring this up. You want to go to options.txt and set your gamma to five, and this will allow uh, like you to it's you know it's like Fulbright. You probably know this already. Um, if you're using the regular launcher. Uh, you want to use this instead, this fabric installer here. I don't actually have the regular launcher on hand, but just select 1.8.9 and I guess the latest one should be fine. And then you're going to hit install and then you're, um, instead of putting the mods into like this full, this, this window here, you don't have that. So you just got to go, um, what well, you're going to go into your Minecraft folder here and, um, there's a folder in there called mods and then you drag those in there. Um, all right. So now that we have all that set up out of the way, uh, I'll talk about making, first I'll talk about practicing. So when you get past an area, you might want to make save states and you can go, um, you, you want to practice with save states so that you can, you know, replay segments of the run over and over. Uh, so for this, you can go into your Minecraft folder saves, um, also, this is just how you install the map in general. So you just copy and paste the map here. Don't drag it. Uh, don't just drag it. That'll move it over and you won't have a backup. And then like, let's say you do something in this map and you want to save your progress. You can just copy and paste the folder. And I recommend having this in a folder, um, having your saves in a backup folder like this. And then like you could have, um, and I recommend naming them something like one, uh, like a number and then, uh, uh, like, I don't know, pass white wall. I'm just using this as an example. So, and then your second one would be called like two, uh, at the monument or something like that. And I like to name it like that. So when it windows sorts it automatically in alphabetical order, you can tell like which one is the first save state and which one's the second. Um, so another useful thing is this make copies dot bat. So you're probably going to be resetting a lot, especially if you're doing this at top level. So copy this into your saves folder and then take your spellbound caves folder and drag it on this. And, uh, if it says more info, like if it says windows, like blah, 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 this is a virus or whatever, you're going to hit run anyway. It's literally a batch file with like, six lines of code. It, it's not a virus, uh, but you want to hit run anyway, and then it'll make 50 copies of the map automatically. So this is really useful for uh, just when you're resetting. Um, and it's really quick to actually, it's, it'll, it, it'll depend on uh, like if you have an SSD or an HDD or anything like that, but it's, it's going to be better than like spamming control V on your keyboard. Um, right, so now that we have that out of the way, I think it's time to move on to the game plan. Um, so this is gonna, just going to be a rough overview of like what you do during the speedrun. So I'm going to switch over to this and my Minecraft should pop up. So 
Uh, yeah, we're going to start off here. We're going to dig down and get this wool. We're going to come back up. Uh, we're going to get that white wool. We're going to go through the monument, through intersection one uh, to this area. We're going to do this area, tenuous crystals. And we're going to then do the university, the nether, and fleeception. Um, then when you come out of this area, you're going to do this area called the grove. Um, you're going to go back. We're going to do this area. Uh, it's called the rumbling cavern, but I might just refer to it as gravel because that's easier to say. You're going to do the gravel area. Um, you're going to get that this wool here at the top and then this wool here at the bottom. Then you're going to go get some minerals at the mine alongside the purple wool you're going to go you're going to smelt your stuff here and get one wool here and set up a pearl hang here too while that stuff's smelting you're going to go back you're going to collect your smelting stuff uh, like your minerals you're going to go do black heart citadel um, you're going to reload the pearl to escape this area, so you'll end up like here, and then you get this last wool, or this, well, the last wool in this area, you get the second wool in this area, so you, you know, uh, main takeaway, you're splitting this area into two parts, uh, then you're going to take this intended shortcut to the library, you get this wool, go up to get this wool in the maze, and then we're gonna run back and since this is an intersection one area we just have to run back to the monument and we'll have all the wool we need so that's the the game plan uh, now I'm gonna show you the example run so this is the example run um, and it's like 13 to 14 minutes long and um, it uses only beginner strats so it could serve as like a good goal to reach when you are a beginner but yeah, uh, you spawn here, and then you want to turn left, get the the cobble, the sword, and the pants from the chest. And then you run towards this area, and these are some blocks you can place just to make it uh, your movement a little faster. It's pretty optional. And then for these head hitters, those are also completely optional. Um, if you suck at them, you can just not do them. It's totally fine. Um, the way I like to do them is butterfly clicking with my like on the right mouse button while looking down um, and you want to make uh, when I'm doing head hitters just make sure you don't uh, go past four blocks because you need to make a stone pick and shovel um, okay what you're going to do is you're going to run through this room and you're going to get your blocks ladders chest plate and wood and obviously the exact like hotkeys you use are going to depend on what preferences you have uh, it like it, like it, on what you hop, what you want your hop bar to look like. Um, so here's a like decent example of dealing with mobs. Uh, you like sometimes you're gonna have mobs here that's gonna be a lot to handle, um, and if it's too much to handle, you just might have to reset. Um, this since this is the darkest area that's close to spawn, uh, there's a good chance that there's gonna be a lot of mobs. So. You won't be able to make it through 100% of the time, but you can just like hit mobs out of the way and it, it'll be like somewhat consistent to get through this room, especially if you're playing on easy difficulty, which um, all top runners do now. So you want to, uh, assuming you got past this first room, you want to break through the glass and then um, make your crafting table and sticks. Also place a block down so that any mobs other than spiders can't go through. Uh, you make your crafting table, you make your stone pick and your stone shovel, you make two boats. Um, the two boats are important, you don't want to forget those. Um, and then you loot your potions. Um, and then here, uh, you can see, uh, it, it's freaking Windows Media Player is, is blocking it, but you want to have these things you want to have your three potions, your pick, your shovel, your blocks, your ladders, and your two boats um, in your hop bar. So, 
ideally you'd be able to hotkey all of these things in while you're doing these other inventory segments. So like as an example, uh, what I did here was I I like hotkeyed this guy to displace the sword and then I hotkeyed that potion to displace the sign. So like you'd normally be able to do that, but there's like no harm. Uh, if you can't do it, there's no harm in like taking a second or two as a beginner to organize your inventory and get get everything in the slots that you want to get them in. So once you've done all that, you want to dig down to the wall. Um, it, you can also, if you want to, you can shift click the wall or you can just, you can drag it over to the first slot. Um, it's all your preference. Um, some runners do either of them. So then, anyway, laddering back up is kind of weird. If you try and place the ladder right here, sometimes it won't place. So what I like to do is I place the ladder at the top, like above me, and then place a the ladder below that. And for whatever reason, it'll place like 100% of the time. Um, but anyway, you want to ladder back up and then drink your speed potion on the way back up. And then run out of here. If you place head hitters, you can just do them on the way back and then here's the hunger trick. This is a very important trick. This trick is like the glue that holds this one run together. Otherwise, we'd still be playing on like 1.4. Um, but yeah, you want to uh, place the boat down, punch it while you're sprinting. And for whatever reason, this makes it so that you're still sprinting, but the um, but it drains your hunger as if you're walking. So. Uh, and yeah, you can basically get from here to here without losing any hunger at all. Uh, so, but when you're going from here to here, you need to make sure that you don't run out of sprint at all. You keep your sprint for that like entire stretch. And so a common mistake that we sometimes make is accidentally bumping into the boat when we do this hunger trick. So what you can do to avoid that is um, you run diagonally, as you can see by my keystrokes, you run diagonally and then place the boat down so that once you've punched it, you like uh, strafe around it. So that's one way. And you can also um, place the boat down in front of you and punch it and then jump over it. But that's a little riskier. And if you mess it up, if you accidentally bump into something, you can back it up by turning around, sprinting, hitting the boat, and then running back. So. Yeah, that's the hunger trick in a nutshell. Um, about this path you want to take, uh, I, the further right you go, the better. But sometimes there's mobs here and you don't want to deal with them. Like there's this creeper here, there's this witch here. So I just go like down the middle here. And then deal with mobs as usual. It's like see this witch, I just knock it out of the way. Um, and then I get lucky that it doesn't hit me. But yeah, you want to go to this corner and you want to pillar up and Notice in the bottom left that I'm pressing the space bar multiple times. Uh, you want to, you do not want to hold space while pillaring. It is a free time save basically if you uh, do the pillaring by pressing space for each block. Because if you hold space while pillaring, you lose like um, a tenth of a second each block. Um, it's you don't have to be precise at all with the timing it's it's free you just like you can buffer the jumps but just as long as you're not holding space through the entire time you're gonna be good but yeah uh make it to this ledge and then i like to place a ladder here so i can get started on mining this block but you can just pillar up it's fine either way and then you want to go um there's a little trick you can see this little area that looks like a c you want to mine in the bottom left of that C, and that should take you to the monument. If you're if you need to mine more than two blocks, you're doing it wrong. Um, so then, once you're in the monument, you want to use this area to do another hunger trick. And I like to strafe forward and left while I do this one. So yeah, you're gonna do another hunger trick and then run all the way down this hallway to the next area. Um, I like to do head hitters here, but obviously you don't have to, but if you are doing head hitters, 
Um, this is very important. First of all, you have to be like good at them so you don't accidentally bump into a block because obviously you'll lose your sprint. But also you want to stop doing head hitters by this point because if you accidentally keep doing head hitters at this point, there's a, there's like a block up here you can on the ceiling you can bump into. So don't do that. Uh, be mindful of where you're doing your head hitters. But yeah, you do that, and um, at some point you're gonna splash your regen potion. If you're on high health, you splash it like on the stairs. If you're on low health, you want to splash it further back, like once you like went while you're passing through the intersection. Uh, but yeah, go down the stairs, get these boots, and then jump off. Make sure you place them. Don't fall down before placing your feather tall falling boots on. Um, here I got a bit unlucky with creepers, but you could just kind of knock them off or just loot the chest really fast. But you want to get both of those cobbles. Um, yeah. Uh, another tip, uh, if you have to deal with a creeper, uh, you want to place a block between you and the creeper and that'll basically make it so that you don't take damage or you take very minimal damage. But you place a block here, uh, place a block there. You just have to kind of memorize these movements. There's no, you just kind of scale the wall like this. Um, and then bridge up one, two, three, you want to bridge up 10 blocks, uh, diagonally and speed two staircase bridging is a little tricky, even when you're holding shift the entire time. So what I like to do is get rid of S and D sometimes like, like momentarily just like take your finger off them and put it back on. Um, also, if you don't want to do these, like this parkour, scaling the wall, you can just bridge the entire time. It's no big deal. Um, but then 10 that way, and then two towards the pillar. And you may or may not run out of sprint here. If you run out of sprint, which I did in this specific case, you wanna place two blocks here and jump, and you wanna be a little extra careful depending on uh, that you don't like, that all your jumps you can make without while you're sprinting if you like if you have sprint still like normally i get to this area with like four hunger bars still uh you can just place your one block and jump over um but yeah, you place your block here here this is just like scripted movement there's no easy way to memorize it but you want to place your blocks there and then place a block on the side and then jump it feel free to take your time on this jump that one's a little tricky then you want to break these two specific blocks of glowstone and you should be able to reach the sand on the chest. This is grabbing the looting axe and you could probably tell what we're going to do with this looting axe. We're going to kill Enderman at some point. Um, and then if you have a uh, sprint, you can just, on this platform I'm on right now, you could just run off it. But since I don't have sprint, I have to jump down to this bridge I made and then drop down here. If you have a... Uh, eight and a half hearts or less and you want to play it safe you can throw a you can throw a healing potion before you drop down because this fall can deal up to eight and a half hearts of damage i've never seen it do deal more than that but i've had runs where i've had eight and a half hearts here and then just died on this fall even though i have feather falling four because it's rng is stupid but yeah throw your healing pot as you fall down so that it lands on you and then break this uh and then get break this chest and get the pork chop. Now this gas is immediately gonna fire at you while you uh, are breaking the chest. And unfortunately, there's no good way to dodge it. What you could do is deflect the fireball, but that's kind of slow uh, and it's hard to do. Um, I like to just either move back and hope that I dodge it or just tank the hit. Um, either one's fine, but yeah, then you eat, you go here and then this is where you manipulate gassed AI. So you stand back like a couple blocks away from this glass screen, whatever you call it. And I start breaking the glass. And when I hear the ghast uh, shooting at me, like with its little fireball sound, I then I run forward. So the ghast shoots down here instead of, uh, and it doesn't try and set me on fire while I'm breaking the glass. So you can see the ghasts. I, I don't have the sound on this front, but they shot behind me. Um, if there's if there are mobs on that platform that you came from, block it off. Otherwise, just don't bother. Get your potions. Get this. Uh, these. You're going to get these two blocks, this stuff. And the way I remember it is you're just grabbing it in this like little uh, sideways L shape. Uh, 
and then get your uh, blue wool, light blue wool. And then you can, you go forward a little and you break down and you take the bottom path. Like I like to take the bottom path and I recommend taking the bottom path as a beginner. There is a lot of debate over whether bottom path or top path is better. If you do want to take top path, um, there is, uh, I'll show you top path first, just because so I don't forget it. But the way you do top path is if you have to like if you blocked it off with like only one block you can just like uh, break it through it but if you didn't block it off you'll just run through here and run on this path like this um, hit TV's mobs out of the way if you need to um, and then go here and then you're gonna jump and do a block placement on this block like that and then you're gonna go one two three and do a block clutch or you can go one two three four and then you don't have to do a block clutch now whether you take top path or bottom path is gonna be very situational uh, I like to bias towards bottom path but basically if you have mobs on here you take bottom path if there's um, Enderman on this platform or on this bridge, you take top path. If there's Enderman down here, you obviously take bottom path. Um, if you uh, have mobs on here, if you have to, if you had to block this off, you take bottom path. Um, top path is roughly like two to three seconds faster than bottom path, but it doesn't really matter that much. Even at top level, it's not that important. Um, so now that I showed top path, uh, I'm gonna show bottom path. You just drink your speed, hit your regen, and then the movement here, it's not super easy to get optimal. In fact, even the world record messes this up, but yeah, just try your best, and you should be able to get over here decently fast, especially now that like control sprint is a thing. Uh, you don't need to worry so much about losing sprint anymore. But yeah, you wanna get up here, and you're gonna run to, uh, your next area, you're gonna turn left here to go into the University of Arcane Enchants. You're just gonna take this path down. Um, right, so here I see an Enderman, and uh, as a beginner, you may or may not wanna go. It's kind of in a risky spot, but at the same time, blazes are really dumb in 1.8. So I'd kind of recommend going for it if you see an Enderman in a spot like this. Um, just uh, go for it and see what happens. I end up getting two pearls here. Um, and these are actually the only two pearls I get in this run. So the Enderman RNG at beginner level really isn't bad at all. You're going to have like a good two thirds or three quarters of runs being able to finish. Um, now, if you really, 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 really don't want to do Enderman RNG, like if you really don't want to get pearls, there's this route, and I'll link it in the description, but I prefer to teach the route that does get pearls because it's easier to improve, if you know what I mean. It's easier to, to add new tricks in and improve to top level without worrying about what, without having to change the route as much. Um, but... Yeah, I'll show you some of the most common places to get Endermen are um, here. Um, you might rarely, you might occasionally sometimes get them here. The world record just happens to get them here. Um, if you're doing, if you're not doing Teleportal, which is an advanced strat, so as, if you're a beginner, you can get them in here. Um, here is another pretty common place. Um, here you might get a couple. Um, here you're probably not going to get a lot. Here you may occasionally see some, but it's usually not very good to rely on it. And that's basically all the places you can expect to see Enderman, I guess. So yeah, back to the example run. You want to go into this university and you want to break the uh, the block above the sign, so that's a really easier way to remember it. And you get your pearls. 
and then you want to go back here break your crafting table so you have one for later and then get all of the or, or this is fine you can get either 24 or 32 fish and then you just dig up and take the staircase and then here you want to try and place a block on here to get to the uh to, to jump on it and jump out onto this window ledge but i messed it up so you could just uh, do that and then here i use a technique called chest eating so you want to have your aim off the chest start eating look at the chest and then press q or whatever your drop item hotkey is so and you get your item from the chest and then um as long as you have your food selected in your hotbar you'll finish eating it even like you can even though you've overlapped it with the chest so that saves some time you don't have to worry so much about it as a beginner but if you want to uh save a little bit of time like if you're kind of already familiar with speed running and you want to get ahead you can do that um yeah in this run i fail the ladder placement it's totally fine if you want swag to do the ladder placement you and then kill the gas um so yeah, if you kill the gas, you can jump into the portal from the front um, and you won't have to worry about him hitting you because you just killed him. But if you mess up killing the gas, you can enter it from the back like I did. Uh, you can also just always enter it from the back if you're a beginner or whatever. Um, right, so you want to drink your speed one potion and this is very, 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 very important. Do not drink your speed one potion until your speed two has ran out because if you drink your speed one and you still have speed two active your speed two is going to overpower your speed one and when it runs out you won't have your speed one so you would have just wasted that potion so don't do that drink your speed one after your speed two is ended um yeah so you, you go in here um this netherrack, some, there's just two netherrack on the floor. This is pretty annoying. Um, you can manage your inventory around. I, I just like to drop it and then mine the chest. But yeah, mine the chest that has the pick in it. And then you want to go up here. And you want to do funny number strat number one. So your Z coordinate, you want to dig forward. Also, you want to be at Y54. Uh, and the visual cue I use for that is just um, going onto this ledge right here but different runners have their own cues. But you wanna dig forward until you reach Z69. 70 also works. 71 and 68 are a little slow but doable, but 69 is good because it's funny and it's easy to remember. You wanna to go to Z69, turn left and dig some more. And you should end up on top of the second building where you can then jump to this area. And make sure you don't accidentally like jump on that ledge or whatever make sure you 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 want to be kind of careful with this jump don't hit this block by accident um if you do you might be able to get a block clutch on there otherwise you just pillar it back up um also if you really really are struggling with that jump i'll show you a backup for it like you want to try and make that jump if you can't but Here's a backup. When you when you come out here, uh, you can either do this, but if you're really struggling with that, you can uh, you can like place a block and then insta dig here. Actually, don't do that because wither skellies like you could block it off or something, uh, or you could go in here and uh, get the wall from here and then dig these netherrack to fall down. Um, but yeah, don't do that unless you really, really have to, because this is like faster most of the time. So then just run out. Uh, you should be able to be fine with taking the damage. Uh, if you do happen to splash your healing potion here, don't splash it if you're going to hit a pigman with it, because they will get mad at you. But yeah, that's, that's the nether. Um, pretty simple nether. And then here you want to, um... First off, make sure your render distance is 7 because we're about to do a render distance based trick, uh, a pearl hang. 
Um, so what you want to do, go to the edge of this platform and the aiming for these pearls are not very precise, but I just like to throw my first pearl like somewhere here, like where this, the wall meets the ceiling sort of. So I throw my first pearl there and then I jump a little back and I throw my second pearl where this glowstone patch is. And you want to throw the pearls like one to two seconds apart. And then your first pearl will land. And if your render distance is seven, you're gonna unload the pearl uh, that you threw, the second pearl that you threw. So you're gonna have a pearl frozen at the start of the area, which is really nice. And then you're gonna go to, this is the fleeception area. Um, I recommend going in F5 mode and looking for Enderman, which I do here. Uh, you wanna just dig underneath the wool box because it's faster than breaking the glass. So you want to dig through these bricks and then go to the left side, um, pillar up, and then you're going to be breaking through the bottom of these two smaller wool boxes and getting the wool. After you got your wool, you have your pearl frozen at the start of the area, so you can just turn your render distance up to at least 16 and the pearl will land. Um, sometimes you'll get stuck in the floor, uh, you can either use another pearl if you have a lot of them to get unstuck, or you can mine, you can mine out the floor, in which case you'll fall and lose a bit of time, uh, which is unfortunate, but yeah, you go back up, and then you're gonna go straight because you're gonna be doing the grove. So break, break the vines with your axe, because... Uh, is fast. You don't want them slowing you down. And you basically just do this movement. You don't have to do the double stack like I do here. You can just run on these blocks and then place one block here. But basically, you just, you just want to go to this corner and then climb up the vines. And then here, you want to try your do your best to prevent the vines from slowing you down. And the way I place blocks here isn't very good. So I sh I'm going to look at... Um, I'm gonna go look at this uh, tutorial for, not this tutorial, I'm gonna look at the world record. This is, um, yeah, here, this is the perfect spot. So, yeah, what I prefer to do, what's the, the better way to do it is to, to start by placing some blocks on the bottom and then placing the blocks on the top. And then you can place ladders there and that will skip the time it takes you to swim up that water stream all the way. Um, yeah, do that. Don't just place them. I mean, you can do whatever you want as a beginner, but it's, you know, it's, it's a lot, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I, if I have a bad example in this video, I don't want to give you that bad example. Uh, so yeah, get your wool. You want to dig around here, just somewhere in this spot. And then you want to, you want to wait for like half a second. I waited for a bit long here, but you want to wait half a second and then hold forward. If you wait too long, you'll hit the ground and die. If you wait too early, or if you don't wait long enough, you'll hit the, uh, you might land on the tree. So if you want to be safe, you can hold it W the whole time. But yeah, this is kind of a sketchy one. I should have like held W a little earlier, but that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. You just go here and get the wool and then head back as I do here. Obviously, if you see Endermen in this area, uh, go for them unless you already have like a ton of pearls. If you have around eight pearls, like eight extra pearls from Endermen, that's when I'd say like stop going for the extra ones because then the time it takes to get the pearls is like, it's not worth the time, time it takes to get the pearls. But yeah, you just go back here, break your vines to go faster, and then you're going to turn right for um, the gravel area or the rattling cave, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can jump around here if you want bonus points. If you do a jump and do a block clutch, um, as a beginner, just, you can do the safe strat though. And then you go here and then here is the gravel pearl hang number two. And I call it number two because when you improve, you can do the gravel pearl hang number one. Uh, but you want to stand at the edge of this bridge 
and you want to aim really if you zoom in here you can see that these blocks here form a little bit of a T shape and you want to aim a bit slightly lower and like slightly down right of this T shape here um, then you jump and at the peak of your jump throw your pearl and then turn around and immediately go back also make sure your render distance is seven before you start doing this so render distance seven aim slightly below right of this t shape jump throw your pearl turn around and immediately run back the movement to make this more consistent is you'll do um is to place a block here so that you don't bump into this wall here and that should be a bit faster now if you've done it right you will have hung the pearl at the bottom of this area um, sometimes there's a very rare chance that even though you did everything right it just doesn't work and that's just basically like if you get really really bad rng um, which unfortunately there's no good way around it for now it's this trick saves a lot of time so you should definitely go for it but just know that that could happen but you want to go on this gravel path get the get the wool and then uh you can you can chest eat if you want but just get the wool and then turn your render distance up to reload the pearl and you should end up on this ledge next to the other wool box so not only does this skip the distance but it also uh saves you from having to drop down which is really awkward but yeah you can do there's two things you can do you can either bridge to get this wool which is perfectly fine as a beginner as always or you can do this if you're not comfortable with that please by no means by no means there is no shame in not doing it but just know that if you're an experienced at this kind of, if you're experienced at this kind of stuff you can definitely do it it's just uh you jump two blocks here and then block left on the side but as a beginner, just bridge across. It's totally fine. No, no shame. We will not make fun of you at all. But do, either way, do get this iron. Because it is easier to get this iron here than it is to get the iron in the skittering mines, which is the next area we enter. If you, for some reason, forget to get it, you can get it later. But it, you're just, but don't, like, don't, uh, don't skip out on it definitely get this one and you want to pick up nine iron ore and i really recommend just taking a quick look into your inventory to make sure you picked up nine because sometimes you'll only pick up eight and you don't want that to happen you don't want to lose a run to that so then you just go through your hallway um now here i'm gonna do a little bit of advanced movement i'm gonna go I do a block clutch here and a block clutch here but if you don't want to do that again uh, there is a very reasonably beginner method and I'll show it um, so yeah if you don't want to do those block clutches you can do this you'll you'll go forward into the intersection place a block here jump on this pillar and put out the fire and then jump down so in fast motion that's like um this put out the fire and then go down or if you also don't want to do that just run here and then turn right simple um either way is fine uh it's not gonna like you're still gonna be able to get sub 15 to, like fine but do get the tnt from here and this is the skittering mine um and this is pretty important so here you're going to make a block clutch on that other side because this is this gap right here is five blocks um so what you want to do is you want to take you want to have your speed one active um you want to wait and then you're going to jump once and then twice and then the the momentum from the first jump will help you make the go as far as you can and then you place a block on the end so like this so you made a five block jump with the block clutch so you you make the four block jump um if you can't do that just bridge it's fine um 
you want to get 10 diamonds, but if you really want to play it safe, you can get more and make these diamond leggings and helmet. But get your get at least nine diamonds and get the purple wool. And then on the way back, if you did this first block clutch, you want to wait, jump, and then do a second block clutch here so you don't have to do a momentum jump uh, for the four blocks again. Um, here's your backup iron if you mess it up, if you forgot to get the iron in the gravel area. And then for here, you want to place a block there and then get nine pieces of gold. And again, I recommend checking your inventory to make sure you the ninth piece of gold went in. And then um, go down onto this block you placed, jump here, and then jump here. And you should be able to get across without getting hit uh, by cave spiders. And then just climb back up to this area. Um, for this, uh, and now that you're going to be doing that smelting and pearl hang setup overlap thingy that I talked about earlier. So I, you can either just run here and turn right, or to pl do this uh, placing out, uh, put, putting out the fire trick that I mentioned earlier, and then uh, you can clear your invent. I like clear it in inventory a little bit, but then uh, right click on your cobble to get half of it and then left click drag to make your four furnaces then uh, you do you're gonna put half of your one ore and then you put a whole stack of wood so you'll notice here you have one two three four stacks of fuel and that's why i have you getting all that wood at the the light blue bull chest because you can take all four of these and it makes the inventory for this so much cleaner um, shout outs to Ben, he came up with that, Ben Contronaut, he came up with like basically all these strats, so yeah. Um, he's like been huge in the Spellbound Caves community, he made this map fun again. Um, but yeah, you, you smelt half your gold, half, uh, you split your gold in two, and then you split your iron in two. And then now you do your pearl hang overlap thingy. So you're going to be running across this area. You want to start, go in, and then do your left diagonal. And here I see an Enderman, and um, I go for it, and it doesn't drop anything. Um, going for Enderman in this area is usually risky. Um, if, you, if it's one, it's fine. But if there's, like, a bunch of Endermen, I'd recommend not going for them unless you, like, really need pearls to save the run. Because you can have mobs spawn and then just, like, mess you up. But anyway... Um, here's the trick to see the location of where the first wall is. So you'll notice I go in F5 mode and I see that this crypt is um, emitting light. So I know that the wall is past this crypt here. And so um, it's two blocks into there. It's right here and it's on the right side. So it's this, this specific spot here. I memorize it as being bias to the right and being two blocks in like that um and then i dig down and go straight on the wall box if you miss it no big deal just pillar back up from where you came from and then you run right and you do a pearl hang there so your first pearl will go there your second pearl will go there or remember your render distance should be on seven when you're doing this and then this is the tunnel where you came from and so here you should have a little bit of time to organize your inventory and, you know, like, it, it maybe if I was doing this run again, I would have put some more blocks on my hotbar or whatever. But yeah, just organize your inventory a little bit while you're waiting for this stuff to finish smelting. And then once it finishes smelting, you make your uh, mineral blocks. And now you'll be set for Blackheart Citadel, hardest area on the map. Um... So you'll do your head hitters here to get to this first room. And once you get past this first room, this is very important. This hallway is a proximity trap with like a 50-50 chance of working. So here you'll see what I mean. So sometimes the pistons will exp 
expand uh, how the pistons will the floor will open like that and it is what you're gonna need to do you're gonna need to be alert for that and make sure you're placing your be ready to block clutch on the side of that if you don't want to do that um, I'll show you a like the safe strat you can do. Um, it's in this run somewhere. Oh no, this guy this this guy doesn't even he doesn't even do it in this run. I think he does it in this run. Uh, I should have had this prepared. Yeah, so you see, you can see he just kind of places blocks like that. And that's kind of slow. Like, I kind of advise against doing it. But if you really, really don't want to be doing a block clutch, at all, like, if you don't want to have to prepare for that, then uh, you can place it like that. All right. Um, example video. So, yeah, you'll know the proximity goes off if you hear the sound of a creeper landing on a plus pressure plate. So you hear, like, a... And then the pistons will open up. So that's how you'll know. So be alert for that. But yeah, if, if that happens, you block clutch on the side. And then you get back up. And run forward. Uh, hit this, you know. Um, go on the right side of here. Because this dispenser shoots uh, potions at you. And you don't want one of them to hit you. So go on the right side of the railway. Um, and then jump down here. Um, here I'm doing some head hitters on the side of this wall, but it's optional. You don't actually have to do that. Um, jump here, and then you're going to dig two into this wall and dig down for the red wall. And uh, I recommend having eight blocks memorized. So you could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on the eighth block, you block clutch, which obviously in this run I just fail to do and hit the ground instead. But you can imagine what a block clutch will look like. Uh, just saves the time of pillaring up. Now here's the TNT cannon, or TNT jump. Um, you'll place your 8 TNT around like this. Um, you flick the lever, and then you want to stand in this area here, where you're slightly between this and the end of the block. So the TNT here kind of gives you a bad example. So I'll show um, here what I like to do. Or not, well, I'll show you. So like you can see here, like the edge of the walk bar. So you want to be standing so that like your crosshair, if you point all the way down, you want to be between the lever and the end of the block. And you also want to be facing this direction in your yaw too. So that's also pretty important. You want to be facing forward like that. Um, as for the timing, I actually messed up the timing here, unfortunately. So I jumped a little bit late on that. Um, or no, I jumped a little bit early on that. So for your jump timing, you can either do... Um, what I like to do is I wait until the eighth flash of the TNT and then jump immediately after. And then... Um, you should be able to have the TNT hit you like um, right as you start doing the jump, which is the optimal thing. In this run, I hit off early and just uh, got lucky, sort of, and it still worked anyway. But there are times if your TNT jump, it's kind of lenient, but for the most part, like it's for the most part, it's lenient. But if you mess up a ton, like if you get it really wrong, you might not be able to hit on. But if you're good with the timing, it'll be 100% consistent, basically. Um, so yeah, you'll let the TNT go off, um, immediately look up, and then you should be, it should uh, send you onto this obsidian platform. And then you should pillar up, and the skeletons, in this run, the skeletons hit me, but most of the time, the skeletons won't hit you because mobs are stupid in 1.8. So I pillar up and the skeleton drops down like doesn't even notice me. This guy's about to shoot, but he he's pretty hesitant. Uh, oh no, he misses his shot. He hits this guy, this block instead because he's an idiot. But yeah, you pillar up and you grab the wool. Now, uh, if you are unconfident, 
you can just Fortnite build. So you could just do like this and then do that. Or like if you want to, or you could do like this to block off one side. Um, if you're not confident, you can do that. But most of the time you should be able to get away with just doing that. And then reload the pearl that you hung in the Rattlebone Crypt and you'll be out. So next, uh, we're gonna finish up this area and then go to that through that intended shortcut there. So this one is wool is easier to remember than the other wool in this area. You just it's just between these last two crypts. So you just dig down here and you should reach the wool just like that. And you can take the staircase out. And then as for pillaring up. Um, you want to, the best way to do it is to face backwards on the iron bars and look slightly in front of you. Um, cause it's, it's pretty hard. Uh, it, it might not be so easy cause there might be skeletons doing it, uh, like uh, shooting at you. Uh, but I found that's the most consistent way to pillar up without losing a bunch of time to that kind of thing. But yeah, you go on your intended shortcut and then this is, um, funny number strat number two but only do this if you have a pearl. So in this run, I got two extra pearls. You only need one extra pearl to finish the run uh, with the strats I'm showing here. So I'm gonna show you what you do. If you have a pearl, you dig forward until your X coordinate reaches 420, which is the second funny number. And then you wanna dig all the way forward. And then you want to aim slightly above this um, dividing line which separates the two sections of iron bars you can see there and then you throw the pearl and it should put you straight on the wool box um, if you don't have a pearl you can do this instead so if you don't have a pearl you can dig up uh, four blocks instead of digging straight forward and then you will break, you'll run into bookshelves and you can break the bookshelves with your ax. Go on the left path and then place a block and jump straight down to the wall like this. And you should be able to barely make it on. Um, if you don't, if you're not confident with that, you can place blocks on the side of the bookshelves here and then jump off of that. So you have a lot of options there. But next, once you're on this, you wanna get your wall do a block clutch if you can. Of course, I mess it up because I'm bad, but you want to do your block clutch. And then for here, um, so this is your TNT cannon number two, and you should have eight TNT left. You're only going to need to use six for this one. And here's something kind of important. You want your TNT cannon to be symmetrical, so you don't, or at least I like my TNT cannon to be symmetrical. So I like to have it set up like this um, with your six TNT. And then you're going to be, you're going to ignite the lever and then you're going to crouch off to the left side of this block because you want to go left so you don't bump into the path above you. Now, the same timing applies. You either wait for the eighth flash and then go off. Oh, did I, I forgot to show this in Blackheart Citadel. It's this run right here. So if you don't want to time it on the eighth flash, you can uh, put, put the lever, jump, and then while you're on the way down, flick the lever and then hold space. And then this should automatically have it so that you, uh, you the TNT goes off at the right time. But yeah, you can do either of those timing methods and then you should blast like up and to the left of this path. And then you wanna strain right to get above this path and the 6 TNT should get you to this comfortable height so you could just land on the path like that. Um, so as to reiterate, because this can get some uh, people mix, uh, mi miss, this can get some people mixed or messed up. Um, you want to pearl to your wall box and then, um, I'll just show it here. You'll pearl to the wall box, and then the direction you're gonna go is left. 
and you're gonna hit the library. There are a lot of times when I've accidentally done it on the right side and gone up here and then had to turn around. But yeah, you'll wanna be doing it on the left side here. Now, um, we're almost done. We just got one more wall to collect. And in this example run, I like totally mess messed up the bookshelf maze thingy. So I'm gonna just show you what you should do instead. It's, oops. It's like uh, here. So you wanna go, I almost got it off there. Okay, but you wanna go forward and then left twice and you'll reach this chest with speed potions in it. Um, and you're gonna take your speed potions and then jump over this hole right there because that's a TNT trap. So you wanna do, that's the movement you wanna do as a beginner. Um, get your magenta wall and then you can just run all the way back to the monument. Yeah, this is, this is me getting stuck in the maze, but you just run back here. Um, you're gonna go here, but if you're a beginner, you're gonna have speed two on this part, so you don't wanna be sprint jumping. So you're gonna go up these stairs, and then you're gonna turn left for the monument. You'll see these blocks that you, you did head hitters on, if you did do head hitters. And then once you're at the monument, you just place your wall. And if you can't remember which order to you, uh, to place your wall on, there's a texture pack that can help you with that. Um, like it looks like this. You're just gonna have like a one here or two here. It's kind of hard to tell with the bit rate, but yeah, you just, there's a texture pack that lets, that just puts numbers on the wall for you. And that's included in this, uh, that's included in this spellbound folder here. So, yeah. Um, now that I've done that, I'm gonna show you the two main tricks that you can use uh, when you're ready to improve your run. Um, the first one is gravel pearl hang number one. Actually, you know what? Not nah, first. I'm gonna. Uh, my bad. Uh, I'm gonna show you what you can do, uh, where you can use your extra pearls if you have them. So as you no, in that run, I used um, two ex I got two extra pearls from Enderman. So I'll show you where you can use pearls if you get a lot of them. Um, I don't recommend using pearls here. I don't um, recommend using a lot of pearls here. Um, if you're in the nether, you can, if you have a lot of pearls by this point, you can use one to get up onto this on this building from um, the portal and then you do uh, let's see you can use one to go from here to here while you're after you do your first pearl hang you just you um, run across here and then you do your second pearl to here um, You can do if you you can do a pearl here. So you can in, if you have a lot of pearls instead of mining this gold, you can mine this gold down here and then pearl over this bridge to land here and then uh, quick, more quickly escape that area. Um, I don't recommend using a lot of pearls here, but if you have a ton, just use it to get across this bridge quicker. Um, or if you want to have one as a backup in case your TNT cannon misses, you can just pearl the wall box. That's fine too. If you have, you, you can throw a pearl up to here and then you can throw a pearl up to here. Um, like you can do the funny number strat number two, 420, to get from this tunnel directly to the wall box. And that's about it for the extra pearls. I recommend, if you like, if you are at the end and you're like, oh shit, I have an extra pearl, I just use it on this bridge here. Um, I don't recommend using it on the stairs because you can run upstairs pretty quick anyway. And that's, a, that's where you use extra pearls if you have a lot of them. Now for growl pearl hang, I'm just gonna bring up a video 
that shows uh, where that shows how I do it. So for gravel pearl hang number one, um, you want to start off instead of once you exit the university, you turn left. And this will bring you into the rumbling cavern. So you're, you're gonna, the basically the thing is you're gonna go here, you're gonna set up a pearl hang, and then you're gonna go, um, you're gonna go into the grove, and then you're gonna skip track, skip backtracking in the grove by using this pearl hang you set up. So what I like to do is go here, and uh, in this case I have mobs that I have to clear out, which is unfortunate. But we want to go to this area where you're over the gravel path, like the intersection between this stone path and the gravel path. And then I like to use the end of the shadow here uh, to line, like the transition between light and dark here. That's where I will line up the first pearl. You throw the first pearl, turn around really quickly, and within the next second you want to throw your second pearl. And I threw my second pearl pretty well in this run. Uh, like you can see I threw it, so I aim so that I'm like this wall here that's like flush above that. Like you can also use the shadows as a cue there too, but you want to throw your first pearl and then really quickly turn around and throw your second pearl. So this can be kind of hard. Um, and the reason why you throw your first pearl and then your second pearl as opposed to throwing this one first and the other one um, is because it's usually harder to aim the first pearl than the second pearl so that's why i like to it gives you more time to aim the first pearl basically but the thing is the thing that makes this trick hard is that you have to aim this you have to have your pearl land in this tunnel if it lands outside this tunnel if it hits the wall and you have to run in chances are the pearl you threw uh, the first pearl you threw is gonna reload and you'll have to retry the trick or reset your run um so you want your pearl to be inside of this tunnel here um you can uh for this pearl tang you can either use render distance six or seven uh some people find six to be more a little bit more consistent it can i guess either are fine um but the thing about this trick uh the reason why it's hard is because number one, it does, um, number one, it does, uh, it's, it's just kind of hard to execute in general. And then number two, it uses two pearls. So you have to get more pearls earlier. Um, so if you've, if you're doing a top level route by this point, you're gonna have no pearls left unless you got extra ones from Enderman. So you either need to, you basically either need to get pearls in the grove, or you need to get no, or you just have to reset the run, or you have to get pearls earlier. So that's unfortunate. If you're going for a top level run, that's just um, what you're gonna have to deal with. Um, so then you do the grove exactly like normal, except instead of. Uh, turning around you get your wall and then you reload the pearl and then from here you'll you should land on the edge of the bridge so you just go straight to doing your second pearl hang and this is the one that only needs one pearl but i had a lot of pearls in this road so i did the second one okay um so that's gravel pearl hang number one uh the second strat is teleportal and this one is a lot more complex so there's a practice map for this and Basically, I'll run you down how teleportal works. The way it works is you have to you throw the pearl in such a way so your pearl is gonna land here, but you throw your pearl at a very specific time so that the pearl lands on the same tick as your portal animation ends. And this makes your this nether portal here take you straight to fleeception so it's like it's as if you built the portal here but without the 10 obby and the flint and steel so that's a real it saves like alongside the well the gravel pearl hang saves like 20 to 30 seconds and then this one also saves 20 to 30 seconds so if you get them both in a run you'll save like a minute so that's basically the rundown of how it works 
So now I'll basically show you the specifics of like how you actually want to do it. So uh, you'll go in here. This is your practice map. This is made by Quiblington. Uh, first of all, the setup for this is kind of bad. Um, I'm gonna, you want to go, you want to actually place your blocks here so that one block is in front and then one block is up top and they're both kind of in the middle. And then to standardize your position, you jump into this corner and do that. Uh, so, um, anyway, I should probably show you the setup first. So let me just show you the setup right now. Um, so in this spellbound folder, um, it's here, uh, flow timer. You want to use flow timer for this trick and you, uh, want to set your offset to 3,500. So this means when you start the timer after 3.5 seconds, the last beep is going to play. And you can set this, this, and this to whatever you want, whatever feels most consistent for you. I like having the beeps closer together, so I do that. Um, uh, go into your settings and change your hotkey to whichever one you want. Uh, well, change your hotkey to something ideally that you'd be able to reach. Uh, so when you're in this map, uh, again, you place your block on here, you place your block here. Um, and so on, in the practice map, uh, I'm going to switch to full screen real quick. Um, in the practice map, you want to aim like here. So you see this block, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but this block right here, like this jagged downwards, you want to aim on this block on the left side of that block. So... Um, you want to aim on, uh, I believe it's, it's here. This right there is where you want to aim like here. So going all the way back, you're going to aim there and let's put out this portal so you can practice it with snowballs. Now the cool thing about this practice map is it'll show you uh, how many ticks it took for your projectile you threw to land. So you're gonna tap S a little bit to simulate walking into the portal, and then you're gonna throw your snowball, and it should say 12 here every time, or almost every time. Occasionally it'll say 11, but like you wanna get it to say 12 every time. That's the amount of ticks it takes because you want, obviously, you want your pearl to land in the same amount of ticks because you want, that's how you get the trick to be consistent. But anyway, you're going to relight the portal. And you want to, um, while you're, so when you're going into the portal, you want to walk backwards into the portal. Oops, I'm in creative. But you want to walk backwards into the portal and activate your flow timer at the same time. So there are two ways of doing this. Um, you can either do what I like to do and um, you can see here also I yeah use FOV 30 to aim if you want. Um, I think I find that makes it more consistent. So what I do here is I press um, S to move backwards and my key for the flow timer at the same time. If you if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to have to worry about pressing these two at the same time, you can also uh, go into your settings and change your walk backwards hotkey to the whatever hotkey you, you put in your flow timer. So in this case, he uses the gray accent hotkey, but you can use either. Um, and then you just have to worry about hitting that one key and it'll walk backwards and do it at the same time. And the settings change you did isn't going to affect the in-game time because settings change pauses are not added to the final time. So you're good. You can do either one. One doesn't lose time to the other. It's just a preference. So, um, and then obviously once all that is set up, you just wait until the last beep on your flow timer and then... Uh, and then throw the pearl at that exact moment. 
it's it's a pretty tough trick to get. Um, it'll definitely take you some practice, that's for sure. But this is what it should look like. You place your block here, place your block there, jump to standardize your position, use FOV 30 if you want to aim on this part of the block. Um, change your controls if you want, or just press your two keys at the same time. And then, so that time I got it. So you're gonna throw your pearl exactly on that last beep and it should take you directly to this fleeception wool box. And that's the trick. Um, so yeah, if you've done this trick, if you learn this trick and gravel pearl hang, number one, you've essentially learned all of the top level strats. So that's good. Uh, that's about all I need to talk about in this tutorial. If there's anything, uh, if there's anything important, I'll make a follow-up video. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps some people. Uh, and as always, stay speedy. Peace.